what happens when you <laughs> sit on the, we the this table. metal, metal <laughs> picnic table. Hello, 5 fam. Uh, welcome to our channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about what our upcoming projects, what we've done, what we've accomplished um, in the past year and a half. Yeah, a little bit of a farm tour. Yeah, I had to put my hat on backwards because the uh, sun wasn't getting on my face. Too much shadow. You yeah. know, these uh, oak trees. Yeah. And it's much colder today than we thought. I came out thinking it was beautiful. I had to go back in and get a hat and a jacket. <laughs> yeah. So it's spring, but it doesn't feel like it today. Yeah, so one of the reasons we call it Five Oaks Farm is because there's five of us in our family. Uh, we believe we're as strong as a mighty oak, this family, because we've been through a lot. And if we also have um, five oak trees. There's one, two, three, four, and if you can see in front of the Dodge, there's a little one over there in front of that. <clears throat> we also have more oaks on the very back part of our property, but these are the five oaks that are in front of our house. They're all together. It was like the, it's like the statement piece to the property. When we bought it, it was like, there's seven and a half acres and only These... a few trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, and which we thought would be great. Like, because we were at a place that had a lot of trees. And we're like, yeah, we just want sun. Now it's too much sun. Yeah, too much pasture to maintain. Yeah. But we'll show you guys around and maybe kind of uh, see, tell you a little bit about how it used to be and what our plans are for the future. Yeah, and uh, we also say 50F fam because that means Five Oaks Farm family. So if you don't know what that means, if you're newer, that's what that means. And I'm Jesse. And I'm Melanie. And we have three beautiful kids. Yeah, and welcome to the 50F fam. Yep. All right, so first up on the farm tour is the garden area. We have expanded it this year. Last year it was only 60 feet. This year it is 100 feet um, in the main area. And then we have a two smaller sections sectioned off. Um, one over here to, I guess that would be your right. And then one back behind the 100 foot range. And so for us, for homesteading, you know, the purpose of homesteading is to kind of grow more of your own food. And for us right now, that is the garden. Um, we do have chickens, which we will show you in a little bit, um, but as far as the livestock goes, we haven't really taken that plunge fully yet. We want to make sure that we're fully prepared before we take that step. We don't want to bite off more than we can chew. So this is the garden area. Yeah, this is here. We have the orchard also and the greenhouse mm -hmm. and yeah. This is my garden field, that's what we yeah. usually call it. Give you a little shot of the hundred. 120. Whoops, I turned the wrong way. <laughs> so that's the. That's about 120 feet of that up to the greenhouse. And then we got this area. That's about 25, 30 feet. Um, we also have one orchard tree right there. Probably can't even hear me. Sorry about the wind. One there. We're going to plant a few more right across the front of the road there also. You know? So if you'll see, if you looked at when we showed you the garden, part of it is covered in a silage tarp. Now we use the silage tarp because we're using that for weed control, um, where it works really great at killing out the weeds on the off season. Yeah, most definitely. It definitely held way better this year because we had on last year on some of the spots. Yes. Hopefully we'll get more in the future, but they're surprisingly expensive. Um, so right now we have the one and we just move it from the different locations to kill off the pasture grasses and the weeds. Yeah. And then over here you got, we got some of the hog panels that we're going to put into an arch. Uh, Melanie wants to do, uh, the, uh, what is it? The, which ones? It's a pumpkin arch. Pumpkin arch. Good yeah. Pumpkin arch. So you can walk through it. It'll be kind of cool. Pumpkins will be hanging. Smaller pumpkins, not the big ones. Yeah. My original plan was to do the tomatoes up here next to the greenhouse, but I've kind of changed it since I've decided to do the pumpkin, basically the pumpkin patch, the pumpkin tunnel. Um, so I'll be reversing my original plan of doing the pumpkins out in the other field, because I know we mentioned that on a previous video, that I was going to do the um, pumpkins in the area next to the fence line, but I'm kind of switching it up 
Yeah, so it'll be a little bit closer to the house and we can just enjoy it better. Hey guys, we are now in the orchard area. I think there's uh, quite a few trees we got planted here. Um, this is actually one of the first things we did here the first month or two we started an orchard. Um, we've also had some comments earlier in our video saying you guys should have an some orchard plant but we do yeah that, i think the comment was like you have all that land and no fruit trees and I'm like, no you're wrong <laughs> there's fruit trees we got them we just haven't showed them maybe uh, um, or if you watched some of the videos i'm sure you've seen them yeah that's one of the first things we put in even before we put in the gardens um right when we were finished with construction on the house we were in the house for two months doing construction and then we focused on the property and that was the first thing that we did yeah so we did four apple two pear, two peach, and then we later added an olive tree. And we have since replaced one tree that died out and then added the Granny Smith up by the fence that Jesse just showed you guys. Yeah. Jesse insisted on having a plum tree. <laughs> you want to tell him about your plum tree history? Oh, yeah, I just love them. I used to work on a farm probably 20, uh, when I was in my teens, 18, 19. Um, but I would mow the the farm and run past the uh, orchard area with the plums and I would just pull plums off and eat it while I'm mowing and that's what I want to do again when I'm here. Yeah, I think it's a core memory. He's like, I have to have a plum tree. I was like, okay. Plus we'll I love get plums. you a plum, tree, a plum tree. Yeah. So we'll show you guys. That's the first peach tree peach tree and then these are the four apples some of them are just coming out of dormancy um, and then this one's one of the apple trees that come out of dormancy the soonest so it's looking nice and beautiful and then we have the plum and two peach trees yeah and they're looking gorgeous I... yeah that peach these peach trees turned out awesome yeah they're great I Last year, I had to crown them off, like completely. There is a peach. I was wondering if we lost them all. There's oh. one growing right there. Yay. So this is only our second year with these, so I wasn't sure how much we would get. Plus, we had a late frost, as we always do. I mean, sorry, late? Yeah, late, not early. Yeah, late frost. So we did lose quite a few blossoms on a lot of things. Um, yeah. But, but when we, we bought these trees, they were already a year old. So this is the third season with these it's the only peach i see though so we'll see what ends up happening um a lot of the blooms did fall off um we'll have to put that in our first fruit offerings yeah <laughs> tie their first fruits all right so that is the orchard um after we just got excited about seeing that one peach we went and expect inspected all the other trees and we were just talking about his plum tree and it is literally covered and little baby plums they're everywhere but we are supposed to get a frost tonight so hopefully they'll make it maybe we should if it's it. if it stays above 35 i think they'll be all right <laughs> it's exciting though yeah definitely. what about the other plum tree you go check i'll check out the apple one. this one hasn't bloomed yet so oh, no. that's actually a good thing this one holds only sprouted hasn't bloomed this one bloomed oh look it's still got one little flower okay so the apple trees have to have a certain amount of frost hours, um, which in the south sometimes can be hard to get, which we did have a mild winter. So that will affect some of these trees, some more than others. Um, each breed of apple requires a different amount of frost hours, which is kind of like a, I don't know how to explain it well, but like a time of rest and cold of dormancy in the winter before spring springs and they come back out of dormancy will all affect how much fruit you will get this plum tree only has one okay that i can see but does anybody know what this stuff is oh yes we've got a can, disease if you can comment down below let us know what this is and if we can fix it or is this tree gonna die i don't know let us know all right so behind us we got the uh greenhouse that actually used to be the horse shelter or horse running for this pasture of our property when we bought it because they had lots of horses here um, but yeah we turned it actually into the greenhouse we put this um, this do this fabric on here that's actually for greenhouses mm -hmm. um, it's really tough and durable 
and uh, we bought it to fit the uh, old canvas which actually we use for the garden down there that's yeah that's what we the silage tarp that we silage used. tarp and we put this little on here for decorative and protection from mowers and weed eating because we don't want to destroy it yeah but man it, it gets hot in there the cat loves it in there it stays warm <laughs> yeah he loves the, it in the winter yeah so we'll Causes go and show you the inside the too seedlings. yeah we'll show you the inside i've got seedlings going in there and in the winter i plant along the sides i'll show you yeah, they left these doors too. So we, we zipped them on. It smells like cinnamon in here. Because I spray everything with cinnamon. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> <laughs> cinnamon is an antifungal, so I actually put it on all my seedlings to stop any fungus from growing on the surface of my seedlings. Yeah, so back a while back, I don't even know if we filmed that, but we built we built the uh, the garden bench out of pallets and I don't old think stuff we did like we always do. Film it. Um, but yeah, this is, this is it. This is my chaos center. Yeah. <laughs> but here's all my seedlings. They're all started. And so I've had to up pot some yesterday, so they're looking a little bit sad. Um, but yeah, everything started and then we're getting ready for garden season. Got lots of good stuff going on in here. And we've got three planter boxes down here. Mm -hmm. Um, or actually four. We got some lettuce, some purdy lettuce. It's going pretty good. We just come out here nightly and and get our salad fix. Yeah. So this so. is where I did a lot of the my winter crops. This winter I put in here with all the lettuces, and I had carrots, but the chickens came in and ripped them all out. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they got into my greenhouse. So I was very upset. <laughs> and by the time it was, they had ripped them out and killed them all. It was too late to replant. So next we're gonna go and uh, show you. The uh, pig pen and the uh, where the chickens are. Okay. All right. So we are now at the uh, round pen, which was used for horses back in the heyday before we bought it, and uh, we've turned into a garden. Um, and now it's the pig pen and the chicken pen. So we have multi-purpose this purpose this place. Piggies. Piggies. <laughs> nothing so down there you got hank the golden guy hank the tank right there and then porks up under her porch um living by yeah they're napping they had a good old lunch and now they're like they're tired so we also moved the chicken coop into here you can if you've been following along with us for a while you know that we put the chicken coop in here um we moved the dog run in as the actual chicken run and then Jesse built a chicken coop for in here. We had to kind of do an extra layer of protection because our chickens kept getting attacked um, and we also had to move the pigs over here because where we had the pigs, oh the wind, where we had the pigs um, was next to the sheds and the pigs were starting to kind of undermine that shed a little bit more than it was already struggling yeah and this this had better fencing um because we knew we were gonna move the shed and add some structure to the barn so we needed that area also mm -hmm. um we also have two little houses for them but they all like the the two pigs always bunk up in the big one yeah they bunk up together for now until they get too big probably He must be good and full. Usually they're biting at our heels when we come in here because they want food. Hey, they're full. I hear you. I hear that groan. <laughs> <laughs> that feel good, Porky, huh? When are you pregnant? Are you going to give us some babies soon? We think he, she might be pregnant, but we're not sure. Uh, the little guy did definitely try to mount her, but uh, I don't know that anything got done. But yeah, this is our our coop. It's pretty nice. Got a little front porch. I don't know if we can get in there. Not when she's like that. Go on this side. 
Okay. With the nesting boxes are in here. And these are our, four of our new ones, our cinnamon queens. Well, we'll have four more tomorrow. Four, four more cinnamon queen. What do we got some eggs? A couple. One, two, three. We got five right there. Nice, and there's one on the ground over here. Oh, of course. Let's go put that in the in the coop. Yep. So yeah, we built this ramp and everything, the house. You guys seen that video. If you haven't, go back and watch it. I just noticed that two of the cinnamon queens have a larger white tail, and the two still don't really have a tail. I wonder if those are the two that are laying for us. The ones that are maybe are a little bit older, have their tail feathers. Must be. And because two have started laying for us, the other, well, there's actually a third one. So there's actually a total of five. But she hangs out with the other flock. Um, I don't know. Maybe. And just is going to show you the inside of the coop. We got a little horseshoe that I made or put on there. We just do that, lock the door. We do need to clean the coop. Got another egg in there. Yes, do. Got a little window. Yeah, you know, nothing special. Um, this side of the chicken coop is where they have access to the pasture. So we want them to be shut into the round pen and the chicken run. We keep this door shut. They can be in there for like when we're not home or the weather's nasty. Otherwise, we open this up and let them free range in the pasture. So it was a good way for us to be able to control where they go. Yeah, it's a fun little, it's a little house for them. Little ramp. They all love it. They figured it out pretty quickly. And the guineas, they roost right on top of that little thing there because they won't go in with the chickens. All right, guys, we're here at the uh, shed. Um, you know, it's a decent shed. It's in really good shape, uh, minus all the siding and the flooring. Um, they built it with two by four, so it's really wavy. Uh, so we're gonna, my goal is to use everything on the shed minus the floor and the siding and rebuild a new platform behind it and uh, use all the studs again and the roofing again. And then we'll add new siding. We'd like to do some glass doors on there maybe French doors and then a couple two windows in the front maybe a few in the back and uh make it a little bit prettier for me because it's going to be my area yeah <laughs> we're gonna hopefully put all our uh deep freezers or refrigerators in there um canning goods she wants to store everything like yeah, that I want it to be climate controlled so that I can keep extra the uh, extra canning goods and stuff in there because our house is small so there's not really anywhere to store it right now all the canned goods are under our bed yeah um so to get that out in in an area that's just for the for the food would be great and now to be able to store more stuff that i'm not able to store like i haven't even grown potatoes because i have nowhere to store the potatoes i'm not going to waste space in the garden if i don't have a way to store it um so i would love to be able to have a place to put all that so yeah, we'll have to bring electricity over to it from the barn, which is not too far away. It should be easy to do that. Yeah, yeah and uh, probably put a uh, split unit in there, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Keep it climatized. Have it insulated. So hopefully that'll be a project that gets done kind of soonish. I uh, can't really put a time frame on it because, you know, life is life and you never know what's going to happen. You know, that's um, the truth. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we're, yeah. Eventually we'll get there and get that rebuilt for me. Yeah, and this used to be where the uh, pig pen was. You guys seen that we had the pigs here a while back. Um, we had some fencing here. We tore it all down. You guys saw videos of that. If you haven't, go back and seen it. it used to be in, uh, goat a house. Goat, goat house. There's a bunch of them here. Uh, we used a lot of that material to build the uh, chicken coop over there. So, yeah. Part of the reason we did move all this is in preparation for this project. Um, and another project we're gonna talk about in just a second was just to get all this cleared out. Cause this yeah. is right where he wants it, where he said he's gonna build it behind. It's gonna be right here. It's gonna build a new platform. Kind of take it apart piece by piece, right? Yeah, slide it over somehow. And then uh, and maybe I'll build a deck out in front of this with a little tiny roof over it. And we can hang out there, a little, little platform. And then over here, 
we have the barn I'm trying to add a 16 foot lean to off of that which is why we cut down that tree that was on the corner which was it was scratching up the siding anyways and hitting the roof so it needed to go um sorry we got an airplane going over no hopefully you can hear us <laughs> so uh yeah we cleaned that all up you know we already got one of our posts laying up against the building there and uh yeah right there and we had that tree that was there we'll have to cut this one down eventually we'll cut that down later but we could probably leave that one because i think it only comes between those trees uh so we'll do it the whole length of the barn and uh, i'd like to park our camper there pull it out of the barn my blue big blue trailer that i have over there and probably the dodge truck when we're not using it just park it there when it's not in the rainy season we can bring it back here yeah because we do use it quite a bit um, and sorry about the wind guys yeah we thought it was not windy today it is out here it keeps gusting up it's like dead and then it gusts up so sorry it's always windy out here always <laughs> all right we're gonna go show you the barn next we're in front of the barn here a lot of our projects happen in here um, this is also where right here we used to have the red chicken coop and then right there we had the blue dog run that we turned into the chicken run if I can find a shot I'll put it in right yeah. in this area as we're talking so we've cleaned it up, up a lot this place is, is pretty uh, trashy buddy How you doing, bud? Hi. Can you say hi? Yoda. Come here. So this is Yoda. We've uh, have introduced him a couple times. Um, he is our barn cat. He's been neutered, had a round of antibiotics. Now he's doing a lot better. Um, and then he did get attacked by something. So now we are actually putting him back in his cage at night. But he's out during the day. Um, yeah, Yoda, he's a fighter. He yeah. did not allow that cat in here, but there was hair all over this place. And he was tore up too, um, but... Yeah, he injured his leg. He had scratches on him. Yeah, so um, now we keep him locked up at night. I hate that we have to do that, but it's really for his own protection. Um, Briggs is not our other cat. He is not a fighter. He is a runner. So we don't worry about him getting hurt because we know as soon as he sees danger, he's out. Yeah. This guy is a fighter. He was like, uh-uh, you are not coming in here. And when we say barn cat, like, he is a straight-up barn cat. He does not. He does not leave the barn. Ever. <laughs> I have not seen him outside other than when we make him come outside in, yeah. like, two months that we've had him. <laughs> he won't go out. And then we got Briggs. Briggs is all the way up in his loft. We'll show you him real quick. Briggsy. Buddy. Hi. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, nope, I ain't having that. Yeah, so he stays up in the loft, and so he's up high. Yoda's down low. Yeah. All right, so we just showed you the cats. Now we're going to show you the barn. Uh, we have everything stored in here. We have the camper. We have the future project pile. We've talked about that a couple times. The kids call it the junk pile. We call it the future project pile. It's in the side here. We have wood that we got milled for the barn doors. So Jesse, you want to tell them about the barn door plan? Uh, eventually, um, they are drying out, which they actually are dry now. I think it's almost been a year. Um, but we're gonna put three new barn doors on the outside of the uh, stalls because they never had doors. Because I think it, they use them for the horses as run-in shelters. Um, so they also use this barn for their horses because there's two feet of manure in here which we had to scrape yeah. out with tractors which you, there's actually a video of that you know, the transformation of getting the poop out pressure washing it um yeah and it was a surprise to find that there was actually a concrete floor in here because we had no idea when we bought the place yeah. you can see our nice concrete flooring which thought it was just a true pole barn that was in the dirt we had no idea yeah, that there was no concrete clue. underneath so that was kind of a that was definitely a nice surprise yeah, definitely was. Um, but yeah, we keep our mowers in here, the ATV, you know, the brooder boxes. We used to have the uh, chicken coop back in that corner, um, mm -hmm. which we had to get them out of here, which is why we did all that, which you would know if you watched some of the videos. Um, 
I know some things are redundant or repeated, but yeah, we seem like we repeat ourselves a lot, but we know that there aren't a lot of new people. So yeah. we kind of want to restate some things um, just for the new people that are here. And if you are new, thanks for joining. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but yeah, the chicken dust was just out of control in here. And obviously I'm allergic to everything. So chicken dust or feather dust or feathers is chicken feather is one of the things I'm allergic to. Mm -hmm. It's been proven. Yeah. Tested and proven, not just a theory <laughs> or a theory. <laughs> it's proven. Um, so yeah, you can even see on the camper like all this dust. This isn't like dirt. This is like feather dust from the chickens. No, you don't touch it. Well, you know, just don't show touch them. it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's just got really dirty in here. And not only is he allergic, but our oldest son is allergic. So we wanted them to be able to enjoy the barn and be in the barn. So we had to get the chickens out. Um, part of our plan here is to have sheep so that was we wanted to kind of get this area also prepared for sheep we have a field that comes off of this barn it's called the l field it goes out these stalls and around and that is where we plan on housing the sheep we are not ready for sheep but that is the next homestead step yes because we have right now horse fencing um, so the sheep could get out, so we are going to add hog panel, um, 16 foot ones, about 50 inches tall, and we're going to do the whole perimeter of our property in that to mm -hmm. keep the sheep in. Which sounds like over engineering on our part, but we have a ton of coyotes here, and we also know from experience with our neighbor across the way, his sheep get out all the time with just the wire fencing that most people use. So Thanks for calling me in the middle of the video, Aaron. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's twin brother. Um, so we plan on, yes, over engineering and using the the good hardy stuff. So yeah, we have to save up for it though because it is a little bit more expensive. Yeah, that we can't find on the farm. It's no, not we can't repurpose available. fencing. <laughs> not the fencing that we want for... Um, the outside perfect. and as you guys know we we try to repurpose everything and i even have a buddy zach if you're watching i know you are um he always gives me all his leftover materials he's like you use it on the farm we're like yes and i always go and get it <laughs> and we use it in the most random places but we always need that one piece and it's been helpful yeah um, so yeah that's the next step for us hopefully is sheep and we don't want to get ahead of ourselves so that's why we've kept things small with just a few pigs and a few chickens because we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. No, and the fencing is important because our neighbor across the street has about 40 sheep. And they're always over here eating. And we mm -hmm. don't actually, I don't mind it at all. No, we're um, like, please come eat the pasture. <laughs> yeah, less mowing for me. Um, um, but when they're out here, I think we have a video of it. We've probably put it in yeah, this I area. Yeah, I think I can put a clip in there. Yeah, and there's probably 30 of them out here. And it looks like there's five. Yeah. <laughs> The, the and that's all we wanted bigger. was like five or six sheep. I'm like, wow, we could probably do a lot more, but yeah. I don't know that I want that many more. So sheep, and the purpose for the sheep is not for wool. It is for meat. We'll be getting meat sheep that have hair and not wool because yeah. I don't want to deal with, deal with shearing. Uh, hair sheep shed their own um, coats, so you don't have to worry about getting them sheared. And that's if I don't get it too attached to them like I did pork. The next thing you know, we have know. two pigs now. Why do we go with meat animals? I should just get dairy goats that we won't kill <laughs> and have our a2 milk no, we're gonna that do we it. need we're gonna do it we need meat <laughs> <laughs> then yeah someday maybe goats if i can ever talk them into it we're outside the back side of the barn we were going to show you guys the fields that we have on the side here is the L field. So it comes off the side like we mentioned before and then it goes, it makes an L shape and goes all the way to the front of the property. So that's why we call it the L field because it's in the shape of an L if you look at it topograf topographically. And then we have the back field here, which is the largest field. I believe it's about, what, two acres or three acres? Three. Three acres. Um, so it's a big, just a large, big rectangle. We call it the back field. And then we have a smaller field that's probably about an acre or half an acre in the back that was actually the dirt track. Um, so we can show you guys that. It's kind of a feature. 
Yeah, you saw in the last video too where one of our kids were riding the mini bike. Um, and uh, that's where we drive the ATVs and the mini bike. Yeah. And, but now it's growing up, it's becoming pasture. So that'll be a third field. We'll have three total. Um, we used to have four, but we turned the garden area, obviously, the fourth one into our garden area. Yeah. So it was called a dirt track because they did till it before we moved in and used it for horse barrel racing. Um, so they kept it nice and level and tilled up for that purpose. Um, we obviously don't have a purpose for that, so we're letting it grow up and it will be a, another field that we can rotational graze once we get our sheep and possible future cow. That'll be the next, next step. Um, so yeah, it's just another feeding area. All right, here we are in the backfield, which was the dirt track. I guess I'll turn around and let you guys see. This is now a field, it's growing grass. Last year, this was straight up red clay dirt track. Yeah, um, we also, uh, our sister-in-law found a uh, arrowhead right here. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. We'll put up a picture of that too. Yeah, I was telling her, I was like, I just feel like I could find an arrowhead back here. It's like the perfect conditions. And then she's like, like this? And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> I've been looking for one. <laughs> Again, sorry about the wind. We don't have microphones, but someday we'll get some. Um, but yeah, So yeah. that was cool. It's actually like history, a real arrowhead on the property. We are in the land of the Catawbas. There's probably more history that I'm not even aware of that are in this area. For sure. Um, and we've also, um, you know, we don't have much privacy here because we are on a corner. Um, so we have planted since over, I think about 46 trees on this entire property. They're all tiny, it doesn't seem like it yet, mm -hmm. but along our road frontage, we planted at least 20 uh, blue cypress. So it'll be uh, privacy all year round. Uh, but yeah, we definitely need some privacy. Yeah, so we did that between the orchard and those trees, we planted quite a few. I obviously, <clears throat> not obviously, I also just planted to some more that will be in a video coming up probably in the next week or two of me and the kids planting some of those trees for the pastures um, yeah because <clears throat> we want to give the pastures as far as future livestock somewhere to get out of the sun and in the shade that's all we got for our farm tour today thank you guys for joining along um, I hope you guys got to see and have a better understanding of what we got going on here the garden season's coming up, so that's going to be our main focus. Um, we probably won't be having any major big projects for a while. It'll be just focusing on the garden and growing our own food. And um, hopefully you'll get to see more of that late, later. And uh, maybe even show you guys some of how I process that food and can it and all that stuff too. Yeah, definitely. Um, hey guys, if you need any prayer, if you have any prayer requests, uh, let us know in the comments below. You don't have to um, write down what it is unless you want to. Um, but uh, you can put unspoken or just pray for us and uh, we'll gladly do that. Uh, we also can use a prayer ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, Always can use some prayer. Yeah, definitely. And I also feel like if the enemy can get a hold of the head of your household, which is usually your father um, or the husband, um, some cases it's the mother. Yeah. And uh, that's we a just, single for this, the head of the household, whoever that may be, feel like the enemy is always trying to attack that person. Yes, because if the enemy knows that he can take out the head of your household, he can pick off your children a lot easier. And uh, mm -hmm. so just be praying. Um, wives, be praying for your husbands. Husbands, be praying for your wives. Mm -hmm. uh, pray for your children. And uh, it's definitely been the case for our family for the last year. I have been attacked nonstop. It's the first year that I've ever decided to do a 100-day fast. And it's also the first year I decided to read my Bible from front, from back, you know, front, front to back. Front to back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been, you know, raised Christian my whole life, and I've been through the Bible my whole life, but I've never ever read it from front to back. And I just feel like enemy is trying to was trying to pick me off this year. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah, it's been a rough year <laughs> um, for Jesse and for the family. Like you said, if you attack the head of the household, is struggling. Therefore, the rest of the household is struggling um, because like as a mother's job is to be the support system for the head. And so it's it's a battle and it's hard. Yeah. So we love you guys. 
and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. You have a good one. Thanks for joining along.